it would be difficult for us to put a sign somewhere saying that do whatever you would like to do to me and you would find me forgiving. As soon as you think of doing something like this, right away so many questions would come to our mind that then people will take advantage of it. People will misuse this. And how would I be able to work with people? And these people have no morals. They don't know how to deal with others. And I'm not going to let these people take advantage of me. Just trying to be nice. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts the sign in Quran al Kareem, announces it to the people, to the world. Even at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everyone is reading this ayah in Quran that Allah says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Khudil Afu, hold firmly to this habit of forgiving. In another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَإِنَّ السَّاعَةَ لَآتِيَةٌ فَاصْفَحِ الصَّفْحَ الْجَمِيلِ The day of Qiyamah is coming for sure. When it comes to your personal thing in dealing with people in this world, فَاصْفَحِ الصَّفْحَ الْجَمِيلِ Forgive in the most beautiful manner. There are different ways of forgiving too. Sometimes we forgive, but may not be in a beautiful manner. I'll let you go this time, but next time you do this, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. And at the end you are telling him, but I'm forgiving you now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not only that you should forgive, فَاصْفَحِ الصَّفْحَ jamil. There are two words in Arabic language that are used together normally. If you look into Quran, Fa'fu wasfahu, fa'fu wasfahu, wal ya'fu wal yasfahu. It's afu and saf. Afu in Arabic means to forgive. Saf in Arabic means to forgive without even blaming the person for what he has done. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us and in ordering Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that not only you should forgive, forgive and don't even let the person know that you have minded. Forgive in a way that you don't blame the person after that. Once it's done, it's done. It's not next time you see him, you remind him, remember when you did this? Saf is not to even blame him after you have forgiven him. A villager came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was traveling on his way between Mecca and Medina. What does this villager want? He came to ask for some help, financial help. He is in need of some money. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is on the camel. All the sahaba are there with him. This man approaches Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, holds the sheet of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the back. He's not even coming from the front, he's not coming from the side to talk to him. Hold the sheet from the back. And he pulls the sheet while the camel is still going on. He pulls the sheet very hard. That Prophet ﷺ had to stop the camel right away. But yet, he got a mark on his neck. Prophet ﷺ turned around. He says, this villager is standing there. What does he say? اعطني من بعض مال الله الذي عندك Give me some of the money that you have collected from people from zakat and those funds فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ بِمَالِكَ وَمَالُ أَبِيكَ That's not yours or your father's money. Imagine the way of asking. فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ بِمَالِكَ وَمَالِ أَبِيكَ It's not yours or your father's money. That's sadaqat. Give me some of it. 
Imagine our reaction to this. We are feeling upset just by hearing it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned around and he saw the Sahaba who were extremely angry and they want to just grab the man. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sadaq, subhanallah, look at the wording. Sadaq, you're right. That's not my money or my father's money. You're absolutely right when it comes to that. But why did you do this? Look at the mark on my neck. He said, but you're supposed to be forgiving. He said, okay, then I'll forgive you. And he says to Sahaba Ridwanullah, give, give him some of the, some money from the fund of zakah. That type of reaction, especially when a person talks to you in this manner, and now he's asking for a favor, for help. I'm sure first thing we would like to teach him some lesson at least. This is not the way of asking. Come sit. Let's go to the office. We'll talk. But, no, give it to him right now. He's right. That's not my money. That's not even my father's money. He's right. Subhanallah. Accepting the truth in that manner. Although the way he puts it is not right. He should learn his lesson. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not want to use this situation to teach him that lesson. We can talk to him tomorrow. We will think, let's teach him today and we will give him tomorrow. He says, let's give him today and maybe we can talk to him tomorrow. فَاصْفَحِ الصَّفْحَ الْجَمِيلِ Beautiful example of forgive in the most beautiful way. First thing, forgive. Let it go. Let it die. We all know when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conquered Makkah Mukarramah. Who are those people who are sitting in front of him now? He gathered all the people by the Kaaba. And if you look at these people that are sitting in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at this time, who do you find there? You find people who killed some of his close relatives, who tortured some of the Sahaba to death. They did not just torture him. They did not just torture the Sahaba just where they would have some bruises. They tortured them to death. They killed them in the most ugly way you could think about. Hitting a woman with a spear on her private part and killing her and you think you will be forgiven? You're tying a man between two horses each leg is tied to one of the horses and you make the horses run in two different directions to pull this man into two pieces. You're taking iron rod, burning it until it's red, it's melting and then putting it on person's head so that he would turn away from the deen. You're burning, putting a fire and then putting a person flat on his back until all of these flames of the fire are getting in his back and there are big holes in his back. All of these people are sitting there. They are standing with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa at this time. Who went through all of these difficulties. They suffered on the hands of these people that are sitting there. And they are looking at them. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa stands by the door of the Kaaba. And he asked them. مَا تَظُنُّونَ أَنِّي فَاعِلٌ بِكُمْ What do you think I would do to you people? And just remember one more person there. Ibn Hubayr that was sitting there. Who was this man? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's daughter is Zainab radiyallahu anha. She was leaving Mecca Mukarramah to Medina for Hijrah. She is all by herself. Only one man is holding her camel. This man comes and he throws an arrow at her. She fell off the back of the camel. She was pregnant, broke her back and at the same time had a miscarriage. Suffered for years because of this pain. 
and finally she passed away. And that man is sitting there too. You may take it on yourself, but someone doing something like this to your children, to your daughter, what would you get out of this young girl? What would you get out of this woman by stopping her from doing hijrah? But it's only to hurt Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And all of these people are sitting right there when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, Ma tazunnuna anni fa'ilun bikum? What do you think I would do to you people? And subhanallah, look at the worst enemies who had to witness at this time, qalu khayra, we only think good of you. We only think good of you. Akhun Kareem wa ibn Akhun Kareem. We know that you are very kind and your father was very, was very kind. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam without having to go through any of the history, anything that anyone may have done or what promise you want to take them from, from them for the future. They have not even accepted Islam. Many of them, there is still, it's in their mind. That this is what we would be doing tomorrow if we get a chance. And right there, without any promise, without taking any, without any conditions, the announcement was, اِذْهَبُوا فَأَنْتُمُ الطُّلَقَاءَ Go, all of you are free. Who can do that? Show us something from the history. From not the history of kings and rulers. Anyone in the world that may have done anything like this. Show us something. People who blame Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who accuse Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who accuse the followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that this deen was spread by sword. Is this is a sword? If he wanted, he could have really used the sword on that day. That was his day to use the sword. And Sa'ad radiallahu anhu made that comment. While they're entering Mecca Mukarrama, he said, Today is the day of taking the revenge. As soon as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam finds that out, Sa'ad was a leader of one of the groups. He was holding the flag. He called him right away. He took the flag off his hand. He said, No, you can't carry the flag in this way. This is the day of mercy and kindness, is not the day of revenge. It's very easy to say these words. It's very easy to repeat the history and narrate the stories. But believe me, the pain that they had in their hearts, the person who knows, who sees, the person who killed his mother, who killed his daughter, who killed his wife, and he sees him sitting right there. And now, اِذْهَبُوا فَأَنْتُمُ الطُّلَقَى Go, all of you are free. We won't even question you about what you have done. What must be the feeling of every Sahabi that's standing around Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But subhanallah, they learn from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa how to forgive. Not only that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is forgiving all of them. As soon as they heard this, they said, okay, we'll forgive all of you people. This is not only one person. This is the whole community. This is the whole ummah. All of them are standing there. They all have forgiven everyone. And not a single incident after that, that any of them would remind someone that this is what you did to my father. This is what you did to me on that day. That's it. Forget it. Fa'fu wasfahu. Forgive and let go. Don't remind them. Don't blame them. That's it. As if nothing have happened. Next day, out of those who accepted Islam, they're standing together in the Saf, they're praying together. We don't pray in the same masjid because that person divorced my sister, that person divorced my cousin, and that person did not treat my daughter properly. I'm not going to go and pray there. I won't pray in this masjid, or I won't go to this gathering. I won't attend this wedding because that person is there. Now we can see how practical this thing is for us, how important it is for us to understand what fa'fu was fa'fu means. 